All right, I am back today with a quick follow-up to my last video. If you haven't already watched it, I'll put a link down in the description, and that is my video talking about why I'm frustrated with the Legion Go S in its sort of required reading or viewing, if you will, before watching this video to have it make a little bit more sense, but I digress. Today, we are gonna take a quick look at Steam OS, or in this case, specifically, Bazite and see how much of an impact that does have on the performance of the device. I've heard reports from other YouTubers that putting Bazite on the device can increase it. And this will give us a window into how this device will perform when the SteamOS version comes out later this year, expected around May for the Z2 Go and 16 gigabyte RAM version. I'm not gonna cover Steam as a whole. And you know, I think most of us by now know what the SteamOS UI looks like. You're probably familiar with the Steam Deck. It's definitely a better user experience and more console-like, but there are of course critics of it and you do lose compatibility with Game Pass and several prominent FPS games that have anti-cheat that only works on Windows. However, the GoS isn't really powerful enough to play those games anyway, so I don't see that as a big loss. I am a proponent of using Bazite on devices, but I can see arguments for both sides of the camp. Anyway, let's cut straight to the chase and let's throw up some charts. First up, we're gonna take a look here at Cyberpunk 2077. If you recall from my last video, this game only got about half the performance of the Z1 Extreme Legion Go. So let's see if putting Bazite on here will make a meaningful difference. So first up, versus Windows, at 17 watts, we did see an increase of 18.9% in the FPS. And at 30 watts, we saw an increase of 22% over Windows in the FPS. In this case, that's an average about 20% gain. And I would say that that is a reasonable gain, although still not what we were hoping for considering where we started at versus the Z1 Extreme. To put that into perspective, I've still included the Z1 Extreme results here, and we are still 55% less performance than the Z1 Extreme at 17 watts and 62.9% less performance than the Z1E Extreme at 30 watts. So we are still seeing a heavy performance penalty in this title versus the Z1E, and that's probably likely due to only having four CPU cores on this cut down chip, and Cyberpunk just doesn't really like that. Moving on to the next title, we're again gonna take a look at Tomb Raider. This time versus Windows, we saw an 8.3% increase in FPS at 17 watts and a 19% increase at 30 watts. So we do see it pulling away a little bit more at the higher wattage, giving it a bit more leg room, but this is not quite as big of a gap as in Cyberpunk versus Windows. And then taking a look at how this compares to Zoom and E, this is actually kind of interesting. It's actually performing almost identical FPS at 17 watts. Keep in mind these ZUNE numbers are from Windows and not Bazite on the Legion Go original. And at 30 watts, it's still running about 6% worse than the ZUNE Legion Go. So yeah, in this case, this is actually a respectable performance. Maybe because this is an older game, it plays nicer with the only four core CPU on here. And then finally, again, we're gonna take a look at Marvel Rivals, a modern game that a lot of people are playing. At 17 watts versus the Windows, we are seeing an actual drop in performance. So this one's really interesting. I actually got 9% less FPS in SteamOS on the Legion Go S than I did in Windows. So that was a bit of a curiosity. And then I gained 17.5% FPS at 30 watts, so we did see a modest improvement there. Compared to the Z1e Legion Go, that's still 28.9% less FPS almost 30% less than the original Legion Go. And at 30 watts, it's 17% less than the original Z1e Legion Go, so still a drop there. So to wrap that all up and put it into perspective, I took an average 17 and 30 watts each across the three games. And what we see here is that the Legion Go S on average performs 12.7% better on Bazite or SteamOS than it did in Windows, but it is still about 28.4% worse than the Z1 Extreme. So to answer the title of this video, does SteamOS save the Legion Go S? In this case, I think no, at least at the $729 price point of the model that's available in the US right now. This does, however, paint a positive light for the 499 16GB RAM version of the Legion Go S that will be coming with SteamOS already on it in May of this year. Only having a 28% less experience than the Z1 Extreme for a couple hundred dollars less kind of makes a bit more sense. And we do have the awesome hardware, the nice screen, the nice controls. So at that point, I think you can make a little bit better argument. What I would love to see, though, is 
this device with the Z1 Extreme and SteamOS, in that case, we might actually see better than original Legion Go Windows performance. So stay tuned to the channel. I'll definitely try to get my hands on one of those if they do come out later this year, and we'll take a look at that. But that's all for today. I just wanted to give you a quick peek at what this device might look like with SteamOS on it.